Hi, my name is Amir Shafipour and the topic I'm going to talk about is the impact the war in Iraq has done to us as a nation and uh, my proposition is the war has become a negative side effect, a side effect to our economy and our country and a couple of the main points I'm going to talk about are our national debt is increasing rap rapidly because of our involvement in Iraq and oil prices have increased during our development or involvement. Um, also, Americans are opposing the war at an all-time high. And my last point would be the loss of life, deaths, because of the war. Um, according to the National Priorities Project, the total cost of the war for our involvement in just Iraq is around $740 billion. The reason why I just say Iraq is because um, we're also fighting in Afghanistan, which I think is around um, 600 billion, and still counting. Um, that large amount of money, we could have uh, used this to pay for the budget cuts, to cover the budget cuts for all levels of schools. I mean, we're students at a state school, so we can directly relate to this topic. Um, also, we could have invested a large portion of this to improve our infrastructure, like our highways, our dams, water supply, because as a, I'm a civil engineer, and the classes I'm taking, it just shows how dilapidated our infrastructure is right now. Um, for the oil prices, um, they have steadily increased, and our economy is taking a direct effect. Um, it's forcing car American car ma uh, manufacturers to create smaller uh, cars, and because of the gas prices, cars, for example, like the Chevy Tahoe and the Ford Expedition, and the F-350, like huge V8, V10 engines. They're not as popular as they were 10 years ago. And in turn, this has led to a lot of Americans, uh, American car producers to ask for financial assistance from the government. Um, and also, of course, thousands of job layoffs because of their crumbling productivity. Uh, according to time.com, Ford <coughs> asked for almost nine billion when they were in, when they were in a lot of trouble. GM, General Motors, had to cut 42% of its workers from 167,000 to 97,000. Uh, Chrysler wanted 7 billion, and they wanted it from a secure working capital bridge loan. Um, one, one thing about the gas prices is the transportation of food and clothes and other necessary items. They're priced higher because the fact that a lot of the way that our food and our clothes are transported by trucks and big rigs. Um, the labor, the labor department said that the producer price index rose by 0.7 percent in March, compared to uh, the analysts' forecast of 0.4 percent, which is almost a double in increase. And the rise in gas prices also helped push up the index. So that's why I'm talking about it. Um, Finance.yahoo.com states that food prices have jumped by 2.4 percent. Um, in March, and it's the most since January of 1984. Also, gasoline prices rose 2.1%, rose which is the fifth rise in nearly six months. Um, my other point is that Americans are opposing war at a all time high. Um, as you can see, the elections last, or two years ago, or 2008, um, between McCain and Obama, um, Repu Republican and Democrats. Um, the Republicans who voted for McCain obviously wanted to continue the war and keep funding it. Um, and the Democrats who voted for Obama obviously wanted to start taking troops out and basically exit from the war and, give, and leave it to the Iraqis to reconstruct their buildings and their economy themselves. Um, CNN states that in 2006 only one third of Americans actually favored the war. And I believe the reason for our former president, President Bush, um, his declining popularity while he was in office was because of his, de his decision to declare war in 2003. Um, the whole reason why we basically, one reason why we basically declared war was to find nuclear weapons because they, we thought Saddam Hussein was having weapons in, in this country and we had actually haven't found any. And I think that's a huge fail. And um, uh, not only does uh, not only does warfare cost an extremely amount of money and uh, resources for a country, it also creates 
yet another de generation that has to deal with the war and its effects. Like, for example, I guess your grandparents were involved in World War II and what a lasting impact it has. Maybe your parents involved in Vietnam War and then us with the uh, um, Iraq War. Um, I watch the news a lot, a lot and almost every day I see a soldier or many soldiers killed in Humvees due to IED or improvised explosive device or just gunfire. And this leads me to my next point, uh, the loss of human life due to our, our involvement. Um, since 2005, nearly 50,000 Iraqi civilians, many of them women and children, have been killed due to exchanging gunfire between uh, extremists and rebels and the American and Allied troops, mostly English. Um, they're basically they're, the Iraqis, the Iraqi civ civilian countries are a war zone, and um, as you, as it's quite obvious that most of them did not want to have a war in their own country. I mean, we are sending troops into a country that's thousands and thousands of miles, so we can completely sympathise with them because they're the ones who have to suffer the direct effects of what happened to their country. It's like their bombs um, destroy everything, their buildings, their skyscrapers, if they have any left, their um, houses, everything. And um, globalsecurity.org states that over 4,250 US soldiers have died, um, hundreds of allied casualties. Basically, as of now, it's only England who is supporting America. Most of the countries like Spain, France, and Italy, and other countries, they've withdrawn because they think it's a waste of time, and they don't want to, they think that their soldiers should not be involved in, in this war. Um, as of December 2009, over 30,000 US soldiers have been um, wounded. Most of them have been wounded from um, bombs, gunfire, friendly fire, and um, a lot of them have resulted in amputation. And not only is this a, tra a tragic deal for ordeal for our wounded to go through, but this, it's a huge task for them to do daily things like put on clothes, eat, um, even try and find a job. So you, it's hard to imagine for them what they have to go through every single day when we just live our just basically live our daily lives. And um, I believe that the, the loss of human life during war is one of the main factors why I oppose of this conflict. So, thank you for listening. Thank you. Seven minutes and 46 seconds. That's yes for our Spanish speaking <laughs> friends. Identify the topic area, you label the proposition, but it has multiple parts. The secondary issues are actually, uh, you know, they're just labels of terms, they're not always claims. Uh, the Iraq War is controversial, so there's not much dispute that there's controversy on it, but the inferences that you're making, I think, are not always the ones that are most controversial. You start off with an argument about the impact that it's had on the economy, and you've got a whole bunch of links to uh, prices of oil. But I don't get any data about the price of oil uh, as a consequence of the Iraq war. There's not much link there that shows that it's the Iraq war that caused a spike in oil prices that led then to the decline in the popularity of particular cars that then led to a request for a bailout for uh, GM and other car organizations that then led to a uh, decline in the number of people being employed there. There's a whole string of reasons that's going on there, but the key link needs to show that the increased uh, cost of oil that's producing all these things is a result of uh, the Iraq war. And in fact, I'm not even sure if you can show that the price of oil today is substantially higher than it was before the war started. So, you know, in, you know, in comparison to maybe inflation, 
we don't have any numbers that are showing that, and that needs to be in your argument. When you get to the later part of the speech, you're all over the place. You've got a dozen different issues that you're interjecting here, and I think that uh, they don't necessarily advance your, your cause as strongly as they could have. I think uh, you were better off sticking to the economic issues and developing that. Some of the other points are interesting, but they are sidetrack issues. They aren't directly related to the main proposition that you are uh, getting to. Um, for instance, there's a claim at one point that, oh, sugar.